Welcome everyone to episode 81 of the Circle Back Podcast, the show where three great friends get together and just talk about video games. I'm Dan LaMarca. As always, I'm joined by Dan Dufernoy. Hey everybody, how you guys doing? And Shelby White. How we doing? Doing well, and I'm glad that you asked Shelby because something we don't do enough. Wait a second, I asked. I, I'm talking to Shelby here, <laughs> Dan, please. Uh, the thing that I want to start doing, and it, obviously it was brought... It's front of mind for me because of the coronavirus stuff that we're dealing with. But in general, we should be, we say, hey, you guys, how you doing? But I want to know, how you guys doing? Shelb, how you holding up? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Hunkering down, barricading the doors. Uh-huh. Now, um. You're managing? Yeah, yeah, just doing whatever, you know, taking classes online, trying to work as much as I can from home. Yeah, trying to take as many walks and runs as I can, so I'm not going stir crazy. Right. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. just about it. How about you guys? Dan, how you holding up, buddy? So I asked you first. So <laughs> <laughs> he's been holding on to that grudge for about a minute now. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could tell. Um, yeah, I'm I'm doing well. It's a little it's a little crazy. Me and Dan are uh, both in healthcare, so we. Uh, you know, it's a little, a little nutty, but um, making sure you wash your hands and you wearing your masks and everything. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's been a little crazy, but you know, I think uh, I think a, a nice way instead of just jumping right into the games, we should be, you know, I should be asking you guys, really, how you doing? Uh, and you know what? And it's true. I mean, we are, we're all the whole world. We're going through something, you know, right now. Mm-hmm. Together. So hopefully, hopefully. You know, optimistically, it, it brings us all together and you know, makes us appreciate one another more. Um, that's beautiful, man. No, that's it. We band together and uh, we can fight anything. Uh, with that, with that inspiration, um, I'm, ready to I'm fight taking the world that. I'm you, taking yeah. that energy <laughs> and I'm bringing it into what we've been playing. Okay, uh, nice segue. <laughs> because something that's giving me uh, a lot of banding together, you know, good feelings. Animal Crossing New Horizons. Oh yeah, that's a really good point. What a what a beautiful game this is. I'm, you know, how far in are we? How many days? Uh, I played but, about a week. Yeah, it came out on the twentieth, and I've been playing every day, so about ten or eleven days in. Um, yeah. Full disclosure: we're recording this a little bit early uh, for scheduling reasons. Um, so I should say even at the top, so we haven't played, none of us have played, um, Resident Evil 3 remake. But I have, um, queued, I have it queued for Friday. Yep. So, uh, we'll be talking about that more on the next episode, but, uh, I am looking, uh, at some reviews. They're looking pretty good. Yeah. The, the heard, consensus. I've yeah. I've what I'm, what I'm reading as good as the second one. That's what a lot of people are saying. Like it's right there, maybe a little bit below with how good the second one was. But um, mm-hmm. you know, we haven't got our hands on it yet, so we'll we'll talk more about that on the next one. I just wanted to mention it. Yeah. Um, but Animal Crossing, uh, it has been so so great. Um, I got Diana obsessed with it. She is playing more than I am at this point. <laughs> um, <Perfecting>. And. <laughs> Yeah, we're just we're just uh you know, catching along all the fish, donating to the museum. Uh I love the the drip feed that they have that Tom Nook has going for you of like, All right, you did this now. Now here's something else, some big project for you to do and this and that and this. So it's it's, it's constantly super, super keeping good. you in debt. Just constantly having of, to pay off loans to him. Of course. He's always got his boot on your neck. <laughs> well, I uh, hey, I think Tom Nook's a pretty nice guy. He does all the work first and then lets you pay him. Well, I, I don't know how far you've gotten, but the the most egregious thing Tom Nook has ever done is said, "Hey, uh, so I, I so this is how this went. I don't know if this went this way for you guys. Do you have any new villagers yet? Yes. Yeah, I have three new villagers. Okay, so when you 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 go to these islands, these Nook Miles islands, right? You meet new people, and then you say, "Hey, you should come live on my island. It's really fun." The next day, Tom Nook gets on the loudspeaker. Hey, here's our morning announcements. Oh, wait, I'm getting a phone call. And he's fucking booking somebody <laughs> for, oh, yeah. for a trip in the middle of the call, in the middle of the announcement. 
He's like, oh, you see how good I am at this? I, I just booked another person. We're going to have another villager in town. And it's like, you motherfucker, you know that you didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, all right, so we have this person moving in, um, but they don't really want to live in a tent. They want a house. So we're going to make them a house. And you know how we're going to do that? You're going to build all their furniture yeah. <laughs> and set them up. <laughs> and it's like, he dude. does give you a lot of DIY projects. He does, but man, he wants you to do everything. Yeah. Is Jade if Tom Nook is actually a villain? Tom Nook is definitely a villain. Although I will say, he is giving you interest-free loans. He's allowing you to pay them off at your own pace. So, you take the good with the bad here. Well, let's, not forget, yeah. let's not forget the child labor. He has his nephews running that store. I mean, that's well, listen, those Those nephews are getting, getting theirs, so... <laughs> I don't know. They're there from like 8 in the morning till 10 at night. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and they are, I mean, they are definitely Nook Inc. employees through and through. Company <laughs> man. Um, but yeah, it's it's just getting better and better as time goes on. And um, like right now, I just built a campsite so that um, other people will come visit. Uh, and then you can talk to them about moving in and and then... You know, Tom Nook hinted that uh, there are some big things coming. I have uh, the Able Sisters setting up a shop in my town right now. It's it's getting pretty good. Nice. I I had one of the Able. What what are their names? Able Sisters. Yeah, I had Mabel. one of them. Uh, Mabel. Okay, one of them came and set up, um, like a temporary. Hey, I'll be here every other day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sort of situation. If you buy enough stuff from her, she'll say, "Hey, I want to build a, a a shop here permanently." Nice. I think the last thing I just did, I got to check this morning, but um, I paid off the the second or third loan. I I got a room. I have a new room. Yeah. Place. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm awaiting today. Nice. 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 So I think I'm up to paying like almost four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Like three ninety eight <laughs> or three forty eight yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the thing I love and the thing that Animal Crossing has always done super well, uh, there are always little surprises around every corner. So like all of a sudden you're out exploring at night and I don't know if you guys have met Celeste, uh, Blather's sister, Mm -hmm. brother Owl. So it's like, just stumbling. She's an owl. No, it's Sahara. Yeah. That's Sahara the... The uh, the racially insensitive uh, camel rug, yeah. <laughs> um, and they, yeah, but that's the stuff I'm talking about. Like, it's just so cool that this game, and it's an Animal Crossing thing. It always has been, where it's like all of a sudden you're like, whoa, who's this in my town? Whoa, what's going on here? Like every corner, it's like you're finding new things that are just because they don't like point you in a lot of directions. It's just like you stumble into somebody so it feels really really fun coming across this stuff every day is like yeah 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 Um, totally it's way more organic that way definitely uh and i I, i'm still refusing to like min max or time travel or do any of that kind of stuff i'm just experiencing it you know at my own pace going around fishing going to the islands getting resources and just having a good time same same i just um I just bought turnips for the first time. There you go. You oh, on Sunday. Stock market. Yeah, so I, stock I bought, market. Them, bought them. That is hysterical. The Sal, yeah, it's good. Sal Jones stock market. That yep. is so funny. It's really good. <laughs> um, but I just bought those, and then I guess you just wait throughout the week. I don't know if there's a certain day that's supposed to be better. Like, it's, yeah, we'll see I what mean, happens. The, Yesterday, prices I, sucked. I was so upset. I bought my first. So, first of all, everyone has different prices at their islands. Uh-huh. So what you can do is like visit my island. I could I could text you and be like, dude, they're selling for three fifty over here, and you can come over here and sell them. Oh damn! Uh, and what happened to me was on the first day, I the first day they were for sale last Sunday, I bought a bunch of them, and then the next day it was like it, I think it were like one hundred and five, and then it was one hundred and fifty the next day. I was yeah. like, Ooh, that's nice. I'm gonna do that. And then the next day it was like two fifty. Ooh! And I was like, damn it! I sold them all for one fifty. Ooh! Yeah, I gotta um, check. Yeah, you just check every day, and that's what I'm saying. Like any 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 friends that you have online, have them check because you can make big money from that. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been yeah. having a good time with this game. This is my first Animal Crossing, and um, so I'm like, 
I messed up big time in the beginning. I didn't realize that like the stone axe would get wood out of trees without harming oh, them. Oh no, so were you I chopping the them all axe down? Axe. I chopped every tree on my <laughs> island down. Every no, single tree kidding. on the island down. No way. To get wood. And didn't I was like, all right. I waited like three days. I was like, these aren't growing back. Did you leave them as stumps? <laughs> they were as stumps because I thought they would grow back. And I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, these aren't growing back. So Dude, I had how to many go to... beetles did you have on the stumps oh, all at all times? It was crazy. I had to go to other islands and just eat fruit and dig up. Oh, well, that's how I wound up getting different oh, kinds you of took full fruits trees. and stuff. So I would eat a fruit, dig up the whole tree, put it on my island. Yeah. And then I would do that for like two or three fruit trees and then shake off the fruit and bury the fruit. And then bury the fruit. So now I have oh, a fucking so peach funny. and pear orchard. orchard. Nice. So nice. And coconuts. So I'm working on Very that. Nice. I don't know what other I kind need, of fruit there is in the game. The only but... one I'm missing is cherries. Nice. nice. I'm from my island. I have so many cherry trees. Dan, you have cherries? I have every fruit. Oh, do you? Coconut. I have to come to my island, guys. I got peaches. I got pears. I got... Apples. There you go. Yeah, I only Everything have peaches, pears, and coconuts so far. I couldn't find any of the other ones. No, come to my yeah. I got bamboo. Come, come over. <laughs> Dude, you should see my bamboo forest. It's beautiful. I have like a nice bamboo shrine. I have to like the, the raccoon god. I made like a little like <laughs> zen garden with like a zen like pillow that you could sit on. And then there's a so the raccoon god. <laughs> the raccoon god. <laughs> like there's bamboo all around, and I have this bamboo shoot that like. It has water coming down, dripping right behind. Him, yeah, like, I have one of those in my, my bamboo forest, too. It's nice. awesome. It's beautiful. I don't you, even... you pray, and you get to go. I didn't Dan, even know I you can get bamboo. Later. <laughs> yeah, guys. Also, have you guys tried the, uh, the money trees yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, I got money trees everywhere. I kind of figured that out on my own. I was, yeah. I was very proud of myself. You just re reburied the, the money? That's it. No, well, I did that for the first tree, and then the next time I wound up having a lot more money on me, so I buried ten grand. Nice. And if you bury ten grand, it comes get, up with yeah, thirty 10 grand. Each, thirty grand. Now I have a question about those though. Did that does that come back? Like yes. or is it a one time deal? Like that tree just grew your thirty grand and that's the only time it'll grow it. That I have Dan, no do you, clue. Do you know the answer to that, Dan? Oh, I don't know. In past games, I believe it's like fruit. Like it'll just grow back every three days or whatever. Okay, all right. That's what I I, I assume that, but I I, I am didn't curious know sure. in this game because I don't know if it's been long enough where I've seen, uh, but I am curious because I could see it being like, hey, that's your one time harvest and then it's done. Right, and then you just have a tree. So right. So we'll see what happens. I was also worried about like moving a money tree from one spot to another because I didn't know if right. you know like when you dig it up it. It's like golden soil. I was like, oh, maybe the tree has to stay here. I think. I so I'm yeah, I've, I never tried it, but I think you can probably do it. Yeah, I would try it on the on the thousand one first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so and then I wasn't all, sure, yeah. but I didn't want to risk it. Like I had fifty grand on me at one point when I dug it up, and I was like, if I dig fifty, if I bury fifty grand, that would be dope. I, I was like, so what? I, <laughs> I I did see a gif of somebody shaking a tree and each thing was ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Oh god damn. All right, Which so big may, money. Maybe I'll try it on a twenty grand one first. Yeah. <laughs> work in life, honestly. What'd you say? I worked in real life. Oh it's, it's, yeah. I, I wish um, uh yeah. Yeah, I I just I'm really loving this game. It's super super fun. Just and, fun. and honestly, when we when we sign off here, I'm probably gonna go play, <laughs> gonna go play it. Yeah, I know. Me I too. saw so I saw a meme the other day. It was actually really funny, and um, it was like a a bird on stage doing like stand up, and he's mm -hmm. holding cards, and he tells the joke. He's like, I caught a sea bass the other day. Oh wait, it was more like a C plus. And and somebody in the crowd yells, boo, get new material. And he looks down at his cards and it's just the same joke over and over again. <laughs> the, uh, the funny thing is in this one, they have a couple of the fish have like different, like multiple. The squid those, does. I know yeah, the, squid the squid has, squid has different. multiple. Cling, I might catch it. Yeah, exactly. But I'm not so going gonna to lie. I, I use it to kind of like, especially in the beginning of the game, to memorize what I've already caught. Because I'll be like, oh, if you I've remember, heard that like, oh, I've before. heard that one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, little tip: they will say whenever you catch a, a fish or a bug or something. Yeah. If your villager says yes with an exclamation point, that means it's new. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's the first time you caught it. All right. Good. Um, good a lot of little little details like that that I that I love in this game. 
Nice. So, yeah. I, yeah. Sorry, Shub, what were you saying? No, no, I, I was just about to say, I just got, um, the, you can, like, make exclamations or something. I forgot what they call it. Yeah, uh, the reactions. They call it reactions. Reactions, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can make reactions. I just got that. Clapping's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I There's a lot of really good ones that, that I got. Uh, the, my favorite is the classic, the, the cold chill one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know you guys haven't played the other games, but there's always been this, like, this, like, wind blows. Whew, and then you like shiver and it's like it's supposed to be like an awkward moment like thing so, like, <laughs> someone will like give me a gift that i don't like and i'll just do that to them and they'll like look at me funny that's funny um but yeah it's it's just awesome and it's so much fun to see like especially like you guys new new players that are actually really enjoying it it's, oh, it's man. super fun no well, yet my island but like i want to wait till my island's like i still got some work to do oh i'm coming to visit today <laughs> better open those gates All right, so, so i i'm like a hoarder i have shit everywhere like i didn't know like everything that i've every day that they change stuff up in the store i buy the two new items or three new items and just but are you not them, putting it in storage throw them around my house no i was putting them in storage but i was just like anything that goes outside i was oh, like yeah. ah, fuck it i'll put it around the house it's, it's outside <laughs> So I was like, does it so just white trash just city. keep stuff or do you just sell whatever the hell you feel like and keep whatever you want? And I was like, so oh, once I'm you, yeah, once you buy stuff, it's in your catalog forever. So okay. You can, you can repurchase anything that you've previously bought. Cool. I, it's good sometimes. Like you don't have yeah. to this. Yeah. Cause in the old games, you, you really did have to hoard stuff that you wanted and there wasn't like storage. So what you would do is you would sell stuff that you would have too much of or whatever. And then you would rebuy from the catalog if you wanted to like, Oh, this will fit in this room. Well, and whatever. Nice. Yeah. I kind of figured like at this point now that the nooks cranny is open, I was like, Oh, well, well some of this random shit might be the hot item of the day or something. So let me hold on to it. Mm-hmm. But I just have yeah, way too the, much stuff. <laughs> I think the hot item of the day is always something that you have a DIY recipe for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. I think mine's like a rocking chair right now or something. Mm. Or it was yesterday, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's super good. I'm I'm loving it. Um it's just it's, it's, it's fun to hear you guys are enjoying it too. Oh, man, yeah. so much. Definitely playing some more today for sure. <laughs> uh okay that was animal crossing new horizons uh we'll talk i'll talk briefly i'm still still playing murder by numbers still loving it it's just super long like it's i don't know if it's that i'm still bad at picross or if it's just a really long game but like i'm like 15 16 hours in and i'm in the third act out of four um and it's just it's still really really good and like i love the story um, the way the characters and relationships are growing and shifting. It's like super, super fun. I, nice. I, I really, really love this game. Um, so I've been kind of like dipping between Animal Crossing Murder by Numbers and Doom Eternal. Which and that. Yeah, so Doom Eternal is definitely growing on me. Um, the combat is just so, so, so good. And like when you, when you get in a rhythm in that game, there's nothing that tops it as far as action for me um it completely like you go into like a trance and it's just the music is awesome and you're just like moving around the the arenas uh i it's unparalleled in first person shooters no doubt really and i think i was talking to dan a little bit before we started i think i like the way this game plays way more even than i like doom 2016 because oh, wow, really? it just kind of like ramps everything up so like because i feel like i'm getting the hang of it and i'm good at it it's just so much fun to like like i'm constantly moving and shooting and and all right i'm running low on ammo i'm gonna chainsaw this guy i'm running low on armor i'm gonna set these guys on fire because that's the loop it's chainsaw gives you ammo and it's auto kill uh if you if someone's on fire, they drop armor, and then if you kill them while they're on fire, they drop an extra amount of armor. And then if you do a glory kill, which is like a finishing move, uh, then you get health. So like you're doing a loop of like, what do I need? Okay. All right, now here's a group of small enemies. I'll set them on fire, throw a grenade down, a ton of armor will pop out. I'll run in there and then you know go after the big guy. It's just such like a a fun loop that that you go through go through um i'm about two-thirds of the way through i'm I'm taking my time with it because 
Uh, I am playing a lot of Animal Crossing, and this game is super fun as like a, hey, let me do one mission today and then move on and then do one mission today. Like it, it's been really, really great for that. Um, the exploration is still really fun and scratching an itch for me. Like I want to 100% every single level that I've been in. And I actually am at 100% right now because I'm not like exiting until I get every little secret. Um, so that's been super, super fun. I still have the same complaints. Um, it cuts to a tutorial video whenever you see a new boss and it's fucking weird. Um, the story is still really, really silly in a not fun way. Like they, they, they are on the wrong end of that line that they were straddling in doom 2016. And it's just silly. Like they're like, they think it's so funny that like the doom guy is like this unparalleled being so like they love like you you get these audio logs that are like we've we've we're looking at his dna and it's unbelievable how and it's like it's not like that fun ridiculous shit that was in 2016 it feels like because it's a fine line when you play that right when you're trying to be funny and ridiculous it's like you can go either way where it's either too ridiculous or too serious and doom 2016 was perfect on that line and this one is all over the place in a bad way. Like, I, I don't enjoy that stuff really at all. Um, but because the combat, the music, the exploration is so, so good, like, this is just a fantastic game regardless of that. I'm glad you're enjoying it, though, because I know how much you're looking forward to it. So, you know, last time when you talked about it, I was like, oh, I feel, I, like I felt bad. So I'm glad, I'm glad you're, you're finding yeah. <laughs> things. No, it's like I'm the truth is it's it's just you you cannot get uh, at least i have not found a game that satisfies that first person shooter with this level of speed and action like that it doesn't exist outside of this and doom 2016 for me it's also for me it just gets me super excited every time i i come into one of these combat arenas and it's just like non-stop you know like edge of your seat the whole time you're not sure if you're gonna live or die it's it's awesome it's great it's cool man. nice so i highly highly recommend it the music is getting better and better as the game goes through you know how i don't i don't know how much uh metal you guys listen to but some like heavy metal is like very electronic yeah and i fucking hate that <laughs> so like in the beginning of this game there was a lot of that and i was like this kind of sucks and then as it's gone on it's a lot more like you know, like heavy, heavy you guitar know, like riffs and guitar yeah. riffs and and fast drumming and like really, really good metal, and that that's been really fun for me because it, it goes well with what we have, you know, like with what the game's showing you, you know, with all these demons and everything. It's awesome. All right, all right, that's so, good. It's so always fun it. when I mean, like the music plays right into it and like oh yeah, it, it, it like makes the experience better. I mean, look at Control last year with the, the ashtray maze, you know, like yeah, exactly. stuff like that this, is yeah, yeah, it's so awesome when that when that all comes together. But this game and I and I remember thinking of it in 2016 too, like when you're at a really hard combat arena and you're like running around, you're literally like bobbing your head to the music and it feels like rhythm, like like you're in it with the music, like there's no it's such a unique experience uh, that these games provide that it's just, uh, it's such a good feeling when it, when it's working well. So right. I'm, I'm loving this game. It's, it's excellent. Good. Glad to hear. Um, Dan, I don't remember. Did you finish Ori before we recorded last episode? Uh, no, I didn't actually. I think I just beat it either the, like right after we finished recording or maybe it was the, uh, the day after or whatever, but yeah. I, I finished it. And my feeling stays the same, man. I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, you know, right now, game of the year for sure. Um, everything that I talked about it last time, you know, I still it still held true. And and the ending yeah. was a sock in the gut. You know, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it, the game the game manages to be so beautiful, but yet so sad. <laughs> you know. Yes. Yes. At, at the same time, but holy moly! Did you I have absolutely... any? Because for me. The... I didn't have any trouble with the boss. I know you had um, like frame rate issues and straight up like, you know, freezing uh, during boss battles. 
The only boss battle in the entire game that I had any trouble with was that final boss battle. Did you have any like hitching or any th problems with that final boss? You had trouble with it as far as difficulty lies, or for me, yeah, yeah. Oh, honestly, like you mean like 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 just it's. A I'm hard asking boss? you. No, no, no. I'm asking you if you had similar. If you were frustrated by previous bosses because the the game was hitching and freezing and whatever, I, I would I would imagine that this would be even worse because it's a harder boss. But I don't know. That's what I'm asking. I actually had a harder time with the frog boss. Really? Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to give too much away, but there's there's like two phases to that boss fight, and there's one where you have to you're also you part underwater, and then you have to fight. Yeah. It was yeah. very frustrating you know, trying to shoot up out of the water to land a hit and right. for it to keep freezing. And you got to, you know, he's shooting projectiles at you, you know, at the same time. So that, that was what caused a lot of fr more frustration for me than the final boss. The final boss, okay. was, uh, you know, I didn't have as much trouble. Um, it was really that, that the frog boss that I really had, had trouble um, okay. there just because of that second phase and how every time I would pop out of the water, it would just, <laughs> you know freeze on me yeah, and you know brutal. i'd end up getting you know hit by a projectile that you know i was hoping to avoid um <laughs> it's just extra frustrating but, uh, because of how smooth my experience was where i'm just like man i didn't experience that at all <laughs> like that sounds <laughs> terrible like my... that, for me just really again it's such a compliment to the game that even through all of that the game was like it wasn't been through you know what i mean like i i it's what pushed me to to push through all that stuff you know to get mm -hmm. to the final boss to to beat the game and you mm -hmm. know normally a lesser game if it was you know pulling that nonsense i would totally just all right you know i've played it i've i've tried it out but i'm gonna put it away because this is annoying this game was right. so good i had to still i still gotta play i still gotta you know try to get through um, all the technical difficulties, and, and I'm glad I did, man, because it was fantastic. Awesome, it's love nice. to hear that. And it broke Shelby, you got to get on this. This game's amazing. I know, I know, I got to get in that. You'll get there eventually. It's on Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know. As soon as I finish through Gears, I'm gonna delete it and then probably download Ori. Yeah, I'm awesome. just. Well, I, I have no Gears. Where are you at? Yeah, I have no space <laughs> on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on my xbox right now but yeah so so last time i think i finished gears one uh last time we spoke and then, okay i think you were like midway or you were you weren't quite finished oh, cool. not quite finished all right well i yeah. finished gears one okay and um what do you think overall yeah it was pretty good uh, again yeah. i played the definitive it's like a solid yeah it's like a, it's a good shooter you know mm -hmm. and it uh, definitely feels good to play those games yeah 100 percent. and um they're fast, they're fluid, they're mm -hmm. it's just it's just fun, you know. Especially um when you're talking about just like make like causing mayhem, you know. Um right. so yeah. I'm playing the second one now and I think I'm about halfway through, maybe a little more than halfway through, and I gotta say, it's a way better game than yeah. the first oh, one yeah. was. Like so much better. And they took more like they just improved upon little things, and the game feels almost exactly the same. You know, like it plays very yeah. similarly. The characters are the same characters, but they just add more. Like you can, instead of just finding like dog tags or whatever, now you're finding stuff that you can read. Like you can actually find files and stuff and get a little bit more lore into the story. The story mm -hmm. has more of a thing to it instead of just you being a grunt being told what to do the whole time. Now you're kind of questioning what the hell's going on with control and command and stuff like that. Why are they sending us on this? So it's like actually soldiers thinking for themselves. Uh, they definitely up the goriness. I think one of the second level technically is like you go inside a giant worm and just rip them apart mm -hmm. and uh, like <laughs> cut his heart out or so, or cut all six of his hearts out or something. Like, yeah, I remember that. So it's it's pretty fun. There's a there's more trend like um combat vehicle stuff a little bit more mm -hmm. of that the only thing that doesn't make sense is your partner dom has this dumb subplot going on with his wife maria <laughs> that doesn't make any sense but it's so bad it's so stupid <laughs> it's um, so bad like he doesn't bring her up once in the first game and all of a sudden like the game basically starts with him looking for her it's like where yeah. did she go you do we just ended what happened yeah just as uh, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> three, you'll you definitely won't hear anything about Dom's wife in three. All right, honestly. good. 
Uh, yeah, I'm I'm in like the locust. Um, I th- I think back at the locust hideout now. Uh, mm. I just did like um, I forgot where we were. We were in some place. There was like razor hail coming down. Yeah, we went yeah. to like a secret base, and they basically had it set up similar to uh, there was like some guy on a computer talking. Like his computer mm. face was talking, and we went through this whole thing. And well, uh, one thing I do like more is that they add more. Like the enemies are better. They're better enemies. There's more variety in the enemy. Yeah, big time. Um, like when a reaver comes down, like it kind of feels like, oh shit, there's like a tiny, not not really a mini boss, but like something yeah, bigger no, than what you're actually fighting on mm-hmm. a regular basis. And though. three three really ramps that up too. All right, good. I'm um, glad to hear that because that was one thing I. I liked a lot more from the first one is it was always the same type of enemy other than that stupid blind death thing that always chased you around the first <laughs> yeah. one. I hated that thing. But um, uh, I yeah. would be curious once, once you finish the trilogy, cause I know you want to play the other ones. Yeah. We should jump in and play some uh, horde mode for three, because I remember loving three's horde mode because it it was just such a fun like hey all the different em- enemy variety and like stuff like that and you're just holding up with your friends like trying to survive like yeah. it's super super fun dude i'm i'm totally into that cuz yeah, i, I definitely want to play the original three. trilogy and then yeah um and then take a break play some other stuff and then come right. back to come back the newer to four ones. or five yeah. yeah yeah we should once you finish 3 you should let me know cuz i'd love to jump into some horde mode definitely uh, all right, Dan, I think you have one more here. I got an email from Microsoft saying someone's playing Metal Gear Solid 5. Ooh. <laughs> it is true. The, you, caught me. you caught me red-handed. Um, yeah, so it was, you, you were kind enough to let me borrow your Xbox, so I went on your Game Pass, and I uh, remember we were doing our, our Metal Gear Corner. and mm-hmm. um, I miss it so game. much. You have no idea. So much too, and I want to get back into it, but I I need to play four. But I saw five was there, and I said, eh, "What's the harm in maybe you know playing a few hours of of five before you know since I have the opportunity?" Uh, you want me to answer that? What's the harm? I'll tell you the harm. <laughs> You're not allowed to skip out of order, Dan. You can rest assured. You can sleep at night. I I deleted it. I got rid of it, and I'm going to go back to four and then do five. Having oh, so good. good. I played about how, how did how did how did you enjoy it while you had it? Oh, I played about five hours of it, and it it's technically like like the the greatest stealth game ever of all time. Like I, it, I, it really actually is. It's such a good feeling playing game. Like from a, it's like one of the best third person shooters like ever. From a technical aspect and like all the things that you can. I mean, because the whole point of the game is. Really, what I love about the game is, I mean, you could just go in there, guns a blazing, and just kill everybody to complete your missions. Mm-hmm. But the whole point is, is to not even have to, you know, lay a finger on anybody, yeah, and just awesome. limitation with all the all the ways that you can get around enemies and things that you do with your binoculars, and you know, of course, the infamous cardboard box and and just all mm-hmm. these. Um, you know, I was finding, you know, it took me about two and a half hours to just do one mission because like I didn't want to have to lay a hand on one person and I had the best yeah. time. I know this sounds so boring, but like, but it's me, so enjoyable. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. So here's two enemies here. How do I get around? And it's just all yep. the permutations. It was, it was absolutely amazing. Um, from a technical standpoint. Um, so I did the, the first, the intro part was awesome. Um, just that whole cinematic, you don't know what the heck's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it just you didn't real- play, uh, you didn't play, uh, oh, what's it called? Zeros? Fan- yeah. Ground Zeroes, right? Oh, so this, again, this is, this is what, there's two reasons why I got rid of it and I deleted it. One is because it took a lot of space on your hard drive and I was like, Dan was nice enough to, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like add you're so Too kind, much. Dan. You need to you need to knock that off. <laughs> Delete games and download whatever you want to play. But that's very nice, thank you. But anyway, I deleted it um, for that reason. But then also, I was like, you know, I was really enjoying the you know one through three. I should really play four first, and then I was looking up. Everybody says you need to play Ground Zeroes before you play this one. So yes. I said, what is, what is Ground Zeroes? It is like a like mini. 
It's it's interesting because it's not because it is not in Phantom Pain. So it is its own game, but it's a very short like it, it's like a it's almost like a um a proof of concept for what they wanted to make with Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain. Okay, all right. So it's like, hey, here's a mini version of what what we're going to do in Phantom Pain kind of thing. Cool. Um and it's it's good. Uh, it's a little weird in the story department and such is, uh, Metal Gear. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a definite must play before you play five for sure. So is, it, is it like a, a canon prequel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I made the decision to just kind of pull the plug cause I was like, I'm really enjoying this. I mean, you know what? And to be fair, there was another reason. At the same time, I had Animal Crossing and Resident Evil's yeah. coming out. Like it, it's such an intense. There's so much. To, I mean, it's a big game. So right. I was sort of like, you know what? Do I really want to sink my teeth into this now when I have? You yeah, know, all that's stuff probably smart. Um, having said that, though, my my main reason was, you know, for, at least because I'm OCD, I'm like, how do I play one through three and then five? But yeah, then, so I, I would, agree with you, I, to be honest. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, it was cool. I'm glad I got to try it. It makes me excited to play it. And it kind of lights a fire under me to really, you know, find a way to play four. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, I had to put it away so that I can go in order because, uh, you know, these games are nuts and I love that they're nuts. And, um, you know, I got to, I got to play four first. All right, I respect that. Um, Shelby, uh, you you have one other game on this list that you've been dipping into. I have. So it's a, it's another Game Pass game on Xbox. I downloaded called Moonlighter, hmm. and um, I've heard a lot about this game, and I've seen a little bit about it. I'll tell you what, it's it's I like it a lot. Um, yeah. Give me the pitch. So basically, it's a dungeon crawler, but. Mm-hmm. When you come back from the dungeons, like when you go into the dungeons, you don't really find um, money and gold. You just get items and artifacts and stuff like that. And when you're in the dungeons, it's like a 2D Zelda looking game? Yeah, the whole game is a 2D, uh, like old Zelda looking game. Top down, yeah. Wow, that's true. So when you come out of the dungeons, in order to make money, your job is you're a shopkeeper. So you take these items that you found and you put them up in your shop, say it's like extra items, like stuff you can afford to get rid of that you would normally go sell to a shopkeeper or something, but you're the shopkeeper. So you have to, your day job is to be the shopkeeper. You set up items, but you choose the prices. And then when Mm -hmm. people come in to buy them, they'll go up to the item and they'll either give a frown face, like a a mediocre face or a happy face, depending on the price. Now, if, mm. if they give you like frown faces, it means that your prices are too high for what the demand is on that item. If they're super happy about it, it means you probably just undersold. You could have got more yeah. money for it. And obviously, mediocre face, sometimes they buy it, sometimes they don't. It depends on uh, the demand for it. Can you change the prices on the fly or do you, you can set change, them before you yeah, open your shop? If somebody, you set them before you open the shop, but if you walk up to the item, like if somebody doesn't buy it, you can walk up to the item and change the price real quick. And they cool. might they might walk back up to the item and now buy it. Um, and then you have like a that. chest where you could like put stuff in the back and stuff like that. And then you take the money now and you purchase, like you can go to the town square. I've only played like maybe an hour or two, so I'm not that far into it. But you go to the town square and you can buy a weapons blacksmith to come in to your town. And now you're kind of funding the town, similar to Animal Crossing in a way. But um, you're funding the town blacksmith. Then you can pay for a magic dealer to come in, and she, like, she'll provide you with spells and stuff like that. Um, and then at night, you're basically just going back into the dungeon and trying to harvest as much as you can. But you have, like, it's really cool as far as how you're going through the dungeon because it's like room by room and it'll tell you how much you've explored and mm-hmm. then sometimes you'll hit a boss and that boss is freaking hard but you have this <laughs> pendant that will if you hold a button down the pendant will take you out of the dungeon before you die okay because if you and die you lose everything that, that's uh unlimited uses the pendant uh you use yeah you can use it as much as you want but you use it once per dungeon run got it got it 
Um, and then you explore yeah, as much as you can when you're in there. You find new weapons, if you hopefully, but for the most part, I think you have to craft most of them. Okay. Are you uh, are you penalized for using the pendant? You're not penalized. You. It's just that you just, need to start you, at the beginning of the, the dungeon if you want to go back in. Exactly. You're just out of the dungeon, and that run is done. Every time you right. enter the dungeon, it has a completely different layout. Okay. Um, there's cool. when you go over to like the dungeon area. There's four different dungeons, and the the point is to find the fifth door. So you go to the first dungeon, and that's the only one that's open. So apparently, again, I don't, I'm not that far into it, but you just got to keep doing runs into this first dungeon until you build yourself until up you're enough. Strong enough. Yeah, because yeah. you can have different weapon types. Like, I think you start with a broom handle as like a spear type weapon. Mm-hmm. Um, then you get a sword and shield, so now you have the ability to block as well as swipe, but your swipe is not very far. Um, right. You can get a bow and arrow, you can use magic, so you have a, a lot of different types of... You can be a different type of person, you know? Yeah, like so, different classes. Exactly, much. so I'm having a lot and of fun with it well? so far. Like the, the 2D gameplay is good? Yeah, it's re- like you, you have a dodge button, um... Mm. You have your attack button and stuff like that. It, it's it's really really cool. So, this game came out on Switch recently, I believe. Did it? Yeah. yeah. I, I, all I know is I was flipping through Game Pass and I saw it, and I was like, ah, let me give it a try. Cool. Yeah, it, it's one that's been on my radar for a long time, and I like I don't remember if I like played twenty minutes of it and and didn't it didn't hook me or if I just never played it uh, after hearing about it, but. It's definitely something I should give a try. It looks really cool. Just like looking at pictures of it right now, like it looks awesome. <laughs> I would yeah. definitely recommend it. I think it's something both of you guys would enjoy. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping it keeps on showing new twists and turns and stuff like that, and like new elements to to do. Yeah, well, as you as you open the new dungeons, I'd be interested to see how different they are. Yeah, for sure. So that's that's what I'd um, that's what I've been playing kind of on the side when I'm in the middle of blowing up locusts and gears of war i'm like ah let me me stop this for a second and go play some moonlighter all right and that game is called moonlighter uh it's on game pass and i believe it is on pretty much everything i think it's on ps4 and switch yeah probably um cool we should uh i should check that out sounds interesting same uh so that's it for what we've been playing uh we do have a couple of interesting news bits the first thing i want to say not really news per se uh half-life alex released since we last recorded the the reviews actually came out as we were recording last episode uh reviews are incredible people love it uh best vr game ever yada yada uh who the hell can afford a vr nowadays anyway (laughs) um it just feel it's funny to me because i have playstation vr I now have the PC where I can get a, you know, high-end VR system, but it's like a thousand bucks for these things. It's crazy. It's nuts. How can you justify one game purchase? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I just can't so this comprehend is a, a how it's a thousand dollar, $1,060 game right there. It's yeah, crazy. exactly. Um, but you know, they, they, you know, put, put the headset on sale and we're like, Oh, you know, the, the game comes with it and it's, and the headsets, you know, with, with the lighthouses, whatever is like 800 bucks. And it's like, okay, that's still a lot of money. <laughs> so, um, if, if I am correct, I believe that this game will come to PSVR and I think it will come around the launch of the PlayStation 5. And I think that the PlayStation VR will be compatible with PlayStation 5. These are all predictions by my brain and no insider information. So we'll see if they come true or not. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I know that uh, Sony and uh, Valve have had a good relationship in the past, you know, putting Portal 2 out on PS4 and, and that whole uh, thing that they did. Uh, had like steam interaction on the playstation uh that was actually on ps3 um so i'm hopeful that that will happen because i really want to play this game but i am not willing to spend that kind of money yeah um just wanted to mention that we have not played half-life alex and that's why Hmm. um i mentioned resident evil 3 getting good reviews not out yet uh, we'll talk about that on the next episode. Here's the big news. You ready? News. These are 
So there have been multiple rumors from multiple sources that a lot of older Mario games are being remastered for Switch to come out this year. I specifically, have heard that. Specifically, Super Mario Galaxy, Galaxy 2, Sunshine, and 64 are all coming together. This is a rumor. Uh, they're being referred to as Super Mario All-Stars 2, and it'll be included in one package remastered for the Switch with all four of those games. Damn. Wow. Which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, apparently, it was supposed to be announced at E3 for the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Bros. Um, and, yeah, the report is basically they're all going to come out, packaged together. Uh, I don't know if it'll officially be called Super Mario All-Stars 2 or if that's just what they're calling it internally. Um, but that will be out this year, apparently, and that's pretty big. Pretty exciting. That's the big Nintendo uh, thing we've been waiting for, maybe. Yeah, well, there's also more. Uh, there's another rumor that a 3D World Deluxe um, is rumored, and it just like other Wii U remasters, it's going to come to Switch with some new content and updated graphics, uh, which is pretty exciting as well. It's a fantastic game. That's super exciting. And the final Mario rumor is that there will be a new entry in the Paper Mario series for Switch. Um, and all of that is reported to be announced on in April Nintendo Direct. That's so exciting. That should be all announced soon. We will see when all that comes together and if it does at all because these are rumors and speculation. Um, So we shall see. Oh, cool. That's exciting. Very exciting, though. I I, I love the idea of a Super Mario All-Stars 2 with all the 3D Marios. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and that would be a huge thing, especially in this year of new xbox new playstation for nintendo to come back and be like Psh, who needs new shit yeah <laughs> look at <laughs> you know like we're just gonna touch ours up a little bit and guess what you're gonna buy it yeah it's exactly. true <laughs> <laughs> uh um, no good so, for nintendo good for mario yeah it's super exciting um i also have heard rumors uh, about metroid prime 4 um it's gonna come out this summer from what i hear so no kidding um, so we might get more than just the logo yes i believe so (laughs) um we'll see if that if that bears fruit but uh, what i've been hearing uh, through the grapevine so final part of this episode we are going to start a new segment we're going to do this at the end of every episode uh we're calling it top five bottom five so we it could be either a top five of blank or a bottom five of blank or both so for the first episode the first time we're doing this it's going to be top five and bottom five video game companions of all time so we we basically made a preliminary list uh we can add people if we think of them as we're talking Uh, but here's what we have right now for the top five we have Clank, Daxter, Luigi, Miles Prower himself, aka Tails, Kazooie, Dogmeat from Fallout, Ellie from Last of Us, Kim Kitsuragi from Disco Elysium, Agro from Shadow of the Colossus, Cortana, GLaDOS, Diddy Kong, Parvati from Outer Worlds, Sully from the Uncharted games, Garrus from Mass Effect, Atreus from God of War, Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite, uh, Greg from Night in the Woods, Miriam from Wandersong, and Mallow from Super Mario RPG. So those are our top five candidates. Definitely more than five. Yeah, it's more than five. So our job here is to uh, trim the fat. Get it to our five top five video game companions. I'll list our bottom five and then we'll dig in. Uh, and again, yeah, it's more than five, but here's here's our candidates for the bottom five. Uh, Ashley from Resident Evil 4. Navi from Ocarina of Time. Slippy Toad from Star Fox. Baby Mario, specifically from Yoshi's Island. Uh, Claptrap from Borderlands. Caden Alenko from Mass Effect. 
Micah from Red Dead Redemption 2, our friend that we mentioned earlier, Dom from <laughs> Gears of War, uh, Dead Man from Death Stranding, and Waka from Final Fantasy X. Pretty, those are some pretty heavy hitters on the list. <laughs> um so yeah we'll just we'll, we'll dig into the top first um i think the best way to do it is just kind of cut who any any obvious ones that you don't think are going to hang um so if anything comes to mind for you guys for me i think um we have like a list of like really good characters and like iconic characters and I don't think Aggro the horse from Shadow of the Colossus is is necessarily no, but that horse this. though, especially oh, especially that, that ending, horse, that ending, <laughs> that horse is by your side, through yeah. and through. He he definitely is. See, but I I don't think you, uh, yeah, I don't think Aggro is going to make top five. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on this? On the Aggro specifically, or the question? No, that... yeah. Aggro's no, gone. Aggro's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, we kind of mentioned it before, and I'd be curious, you guys' opinion. We mentioned how, like, Daxter is sort of a, you know, he's a... We, uh, yeah, we weren't sure. Is he a top five or is he a bottom five? Because <laughs> <laughs> he is, like, kind of useless, and he's funny, but he could definitely be annoying. Yeah, and the only reason that he talks and does all that as much as he does is because Jack was mute in the first game, and they needed somebody yeah. to talk. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't really consider him a Listen, he's one of my favorite, but I wouldn't think he's a top five companion for sure. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm on the polarizing list. How about that? We need yeah, polarizing. most polarizing. <laughs> so we're going to make a third list of polarizing. Uh, no, Daxter's gone. Um, I don't think Clank's going anywhere anytime soon. No, I think Clank, uh, Clank's, Clank's pretty good right now. Yeah. I think um, we got to keep Luigi. I, I, You know what, Luigi... Come yeah, on. I mean Luigi. Luigi's definitely a, a, a contender, no doubt. I don't think I don't think he's an easy cut, but we'll see if he makes it. Uh, we Elizabeth is another interesting one where she was a good companion in Bioshock Infinite, like actually a companion. Like she would throw you ammo, and like I, I liked her interaction with Booker. Um, but I think they totally like dropped the ball with her as a character. Mm-hmm. So like I don't I don't think she necessarily is like a top five companion. Uh, looking at this list, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Or I don't even know. Do both of you play Infinite? Of course. Yeah, I played Infinite. Oh okay. You what know do you think so about Elizabeth? What's so funny though is like, I thought Infinite was really cool when I was playing it, but like it didn't. That game as as a I don't know, maybe make my feelings are just jaded because like my love for that game as a whole couldn't compare to the first Bioshock. Mm-hmm. So like, cause I'm sure there's like some really good characters and some really bad games. So, you know, I don't of course, I, I, yeah. I Bioshock if it's a bad game, but like, I just didn't, I just didn't have that attachment to it. Yeah. The first Bioshock. Um, I know, just would be surprised if she was like, if she made top five here, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm fine cutting her. All right. You're gone. Uh, hmm, what else? What else? I, I, I think... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I, I put Mallow on this list because I love him in Super Mario RPG. I think he's awesome. Um, like, when he, he he gets upset and starts crying and, like, a thunderstorm oh, yeah. starts, like, he's, he's the man. But... He's not gonna make top five, so I'm gonna cut him. I feel like he's the most he's the most underrated Mario character of all time. Uh, yeah, he gets no love. <laughs> Actually, Mario RPG should get more love than it does, honestly. No doubt about it. No, we doubt don't talk about, about that game enough. Mm-hmm. The same thing with like Elizabeth, where like I feel like maybe the game kind of brings down my feelings on the character and, and whether that's right or wrong. So like Pavardi and Arwai. Uh, in the Outer Worlds, Parvati, I'm sorry, in the Outer Worlds, um, yes, in that game, and I really enjoyed her quest line. Um, her and the Doctor, I did everything I could to like yeah. get her the, the sweets that she wanted, to get her the, mm-hmm. the haircut she wanted. Like I was really dedicated to her character. Yeah, she's an awesome character, honestly. She's great. Yeah, but- she's the shining part. Of that game, she de- yeah, I I 100% agree with you, but I think even with that said, I don't think she's a top five character. 
What do you say, Shub? Did you play Outer Worlds? No, I didn't play Outer Worlds. So Parvati, I don't know. Um, yeah. That's up to you guys. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Parvati can go. But again, um, her quest line, I was yeah, probably the dedicated. high point of the game. Yeah, yeah I was hundred percent dedicated to. Yeah. Um. All right. So right now we have Clank, Luigi, Tails, Kazooie, Dog Meat, Ellie, Kim Kitsuragi, Cortana, Glados. Diddy Kong, Sully, Garrus, Atreus, Greg, and Miriam. I think personally, I could see Dog Meat going. Yeah, like, he's like, just your like a fun, me. yeah, like a fun, trusty companion. Um, but nothing really that's gonna blow you away. Yeah, I could see that. Sort of similar to Aggro in a way, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Another one that I think some people would be split on is Atreus. Yeah. Because I think some people, yeah, some people would say that he should be a bottom five. See, I would consider him a top five. Me too. Personally, Um, although I can see exactly what you're talking about because he he makes some stupid ass decisions in the game and stuff like that. But as (laughs) far as like a companion, like you're constantly using him throughout the game, you know, Um, to fire arrows, for obviously the bond between the two main characters is huge yeah, throughout the game, you know? So I personally, I think he's a top five. I could see him hang. I, I definitely don't see him. At least for now, right now. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Dan? Earth to Dan, you there? All right. Well, Dan's, we'll, a, we'll, Dan's upset about this one. <laughs> Dan's MIA. So we'll, we'll skip him for now. Um, <clears throat> I oh you guys there? There you go, Dan. There we go. I I heard um, the whole thing. I just didn't. Uh, <laughs> you know, let's keep let's keep it for now. I was trying to talk, but nobody right, could good. hear me. That's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a little too real right there. I think uh, I think Cortana could go. I know she's very iconic. I don't think that Cortana is a top five on this list. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I mean. I I feel like it's yeah it's tough because like the Halo games never meant as much to me, but mm-hmm. I thought she was a really really cool character. So yeah. you know, it's I hard just, because these characters are synonymous with their the games that they're in. So like if I feel like if I have sour feelings towards a game, yeah, I have sour feelings towards a character when that's not necessarily fair. Like when I, there could be like a really good character, and right. it, it's. You know, I just don't like. I mean, in, in in as the games went on, her rampancy was like a major focal point, and I think that was a really silly story beat, in my opinion. I did not enjoy that. I think it kind of diminished her as a character. So I will make the executive decision on that one. Bye, <laughs> right. Cortana. You go. Um, it's getting a little tougher here. Getting a little tougher. I would vote to get rid of tails. Because, again, this is not top, most iconic companions. This is best, top. All right. I don't think Tails is one of my favorite companions in games. No, yeah, Tails is, you know what it is? Tails is just so iconic. You know, you always just think, you know, Sonic and Tails, Mario and Luigi, Ratchet and Clank. I'm a Sonic and Knuckles kind of guy. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm not going to fight for Tails to be on this list. Um, unless anybody else is. Yeah, I don't think so. Even though his name is Miles Prower. Miles per hour. Miles Prower. That's really, that's really clever. It's really good. <laughs> Miles Prower. He's gone. Um, <clears throat> so we have Clank, Luigi, Kazooie, Ellie, Kim Kitsuragi, GLaDOS, Diddy Kong, Sully, Garrus, Atreus, Greg, and Miriam. Let's talk about um, uh, Ellie, because when we mentioned Ellie, Ellie before, yeah. we weren't sure if Ellie's necessarily a companion when, when she... Yeah, when, I, I would argue that Ellie shouldn't be on that list because she ends up being the main character and especially is literally the, the, the playable character in 2. Yeah. Um, so I would vote that Ellie would go f- merely for the sake that she is not. I think she's a great character. 
I don't think she's a companion. Really. Can qualify as a companion. All right, I I respect that. Because for half of that game, she's just the playable character. Yeah, know? that's true. You reach a severe turning point, and yeah, yeah. So we have, she's upgraded from companion to protagonist. Main protagonist. There you go. Um. Hmm. All right, it's getting a little tougher. Dan, let's talk. Let's talk about Greg and Miriam. Um. I, I, I kind of was thinking a little outside the box when we were talking about companions and what it what it means. And I think they are literally companions to May, the main character. You know, Greg is the companion to May and Miriam's the companion to the bard. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So they fit the bill as far as I'm concerned. Um, in the way that both of those characters' story arcs are hugely impact. I mean, those are both narrative games and like you yes. couldn't have those protagonist stories without those two characters. I mean, those two characters Correct. are the most influential yeah. in their and development. I think, um, and, and it doesn't have to be this way. I think a lot of times people like uh, diversifying their lists so people would say like, so let's pick one, Greg or Miriam. And it doesn't have to be that way. But I think they do kind of fit a uh, similar hole if if you're looking for like a fun, you know, narrative driven companion in a, in a, in a good story based game. Right. Um, is there one that you'd fight for over the other or, and again, it doesn't, we don't have to cut either of them right I now. Like, just, I can see both of them. Like Greg is perfect for the tone of night of the woods where he's you know you know on the surface he's just this you know hedonistic anarchist who just wants to you mm-hmm. know smash but then you find out that he's like grappling with some really you know major mm-hmm. major things um and then miriam's great because she's just totally you know rolls her eyes at the bar the whole time but is completely influenced by him you know, by by the end and, and changes her outlook on things. So it's really hard to, you know, we're splitting hairs here because they're both so I still, games I, I still think that moment where she dances on the dance floor in the club for the first time oh, yeah. is oh, like yeah. one of the best moments because it's just such like a, she's like, fuck it. <laughs> like, we're all going to die. Yeah. I'm just going to dance. <laughs> I got I'm so stressed out and it was so good. Yeah, well, yeah, and I just feel like the best is like that speech at the end where she kind of goes mm-hmm. to him and she's like, you know what, like, like you know, you like you did it, like you never, you were the one person that like never gave up, and it's just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. Oh man, that's a really good question. All yeah. right, well, we can, we can wait on them if you want. Hold such a place in my heart. I would say this though, not in the woods. All the companion, like I think we could put B in there, or um, yeah. Or oh, what's the bear? I, I, am I, um, I should know this. We have another words all the time. Um, yeah. Uh, boyfriend. Yeah, I'm not gonna, his name. I'm not gonna remember. I know exactly you're talking about. Greg's Greg's boyfriend, right? His boyfriend. Um, you know, but I, I feel like down in the woods, every one of those characters could, you know, Greg's obviously her best friend and the most. Uh, popular. So you're saying it's a it's a better ensemble than a specific uh, best character? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. If you know, for splitting hairs here. Okay, so let's get rid of Greg. Let's keep Miriam. Um, and again, this this is one of those that's it's coming down to like, all right, who are our favorite companions versus who are the most iconic? I think Diddy Kong is not a top five companion. Oh, I, I agree. That Diddy Kong becomes, you know, in uh, Donkey Kong Country too. He's the main one. He's the main guy. Yeah, Diddy's Conquest. Yeah. Also, Greg, sorry to digress. Greg's boyfriend's Angus. Angus, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, um, what do you guys think about Diddy? You think he's a... Uh... I, I just don't... I don't... No, I don't, I, I don't think he's a top five. I mean, my I favorite Diddy Kong five. experience is where when he was the main character and Diddy Kong Racing, where the game is yeah. named after him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Also, to be fair, if I just realized if we're going with this logic, uh, Luigi also has starved in his own. Well, I, the, the thing I'll say is, if you're, I, I know these characters, some of them have been the main characters and whatever, but it's like, 
Luigi's a companion. I don't care if he has his own game. He's Mario's companion. <laughs> like, like Ellie's strong enough where she's her own character. Oh, uh, right, true, true. So I would say Diddy Kong also is a companion, even though he's had his own game. But right. I just don't think he's a top okay. five companion. All right. Goodbye, Diddy. Um, all right, so what we have now is Clank, Luigi, Kazooie, Kim Kitsuragi, GLaDOS, Sully, Garrus, Atreus, and Miriam. I feel like um I feel <laughs> How do you feel then? I feel <laughs> <laughs> You're right now. Um I I'm torn because I think Kazooie is a really great companion. Like really funny like like a true companion to Banjo, like where like yeah. she's always like chirping in as as Banjo's talking to people, like a lot of personality. You mentioned so all can... the upgrades you get and all the items you get. I mean that's yeah. Kazooie, you know. They're all focused on Kazooie, yeah. So I kinda like Kazooie yeah. on this list. But I I also I find it hard to say that some of these people can go like I think Kim Kitsuragi is like the best companion in a video game I've ever played maybe so it's like it's hard for me to be like oh he can go and GLaDOS is like oh, is incredible and so so from when you told me about Disco Elysium I mean I can't imagine Kim being taken right. off there yeah but it's hard because we're in it now and these are all really good um do we want to start saying who do we think definitely like do we think there are any locks here all right so i think him right we, we need kim on that list you can't imagine the list without kim i couldn't imagine it without i think i'm ready to let go of elizabeth now now that we've shortened this list a little bit more yeah i could i could agree with that you know, since we were kind of on the fence about it before anyway. What do you guys think? I feel like, yeah. And I feel like Luigi needs to be on the top five. Yeah. I don't know what you guys think. I mean, Luigi is a great companion. I think companion, the first thing I think of is Luigi. Like, that's like it. And yeah. I, maybe that's just because they're the most famous. Doesn't mean that they're necessarily the best, but. Yeah, but he is pretty great. He's great. Uh, but the hard part is now is like where we like, I think Garrus needs to be on that. list. Garrus is awesome. This is awesome. But I feel the same way about Garrus the way that I feel like about Greg and Night of the Woods in that there is quite such, there's the such ensemble. a ensemble. Ensemble. Like I love Tali from uh, Mass yeah. Effect. Like it was her, it was her and Garrus at the end. And in my playthrough, they ended up together and it, it was perfect. It was just like, oh, yes, wow, that's great. You are my favorite. You need to be together. What about Liara? Uh, Liara. Um, which one was Liara? Liara? Come on. Yes, with the blue head. With the blue... <laughs> with the blue head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's so long. Liara. Massive. Nice <laughs> the blue head. Right. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'm just laughing. I, I see what you're saying, though. Mass Effect has so many great characters. Yeah. That it's. All right. really I, cool. I could hear that argument. Liara's really cool. Liara's great. <laughs> We're cutting Garrus. I agree with you. Um, all right. So, right now, we have two bolded. We have Luigi and Kim Kitsuragi bolded. We have Clank, Kazooie, GLaDOS. Sully, Atreus, and Miriam. And we need to cut three out of those six. I think between Clank and Kazooie, I, th I find them to be very similar characters in how they react with you throughout the game. Other than yes. the fact that Clank is more of, helps you in a sense of what you're doing and he's smart, whereas Kazooie's yeah. just a wise ass. Right, um, I, I see what you're saying. Now they're both they're both constantly like part of the narrative. Rather yeah, than you know, like they're both there. They're literally in or are in your backpacks. backpacks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm trying. I don't know which one of them 
I'm more partial to. Not not that annoying. I'm not saying that we have to choose one of them out of two uh, out of the yeah, whole. But, yeah. But if we're trying I mean? to find places to narrow it down. Yeah. So I'm I definitely. See, yeah, my, for me, as much as I I love Kazooie, I think Clank is is a better companion. Um, personally, I I can definitely agree with you, and I think it's because there are many more games in that universe than there are in the Banjo Kazooie mm-hmm. universe. So you get more time with them. Obviously, he has a more fleshed out story. But that's fair. Yeah. Uh, go with that. You know, so so okay. I I think I'm with Clank over Kazooie, Kazooie. Although Kazooie is one of my favorite of all time as well. Yeah, Kazooie's know, great. <laughs> that's why he's on this list to begin yeah, with. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> That's tough. To be on the list. You already you've made it. <laughs> it's an honor just to be nominated. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank right. the Academy. <laughs> so Clank survives. Kazooie's gone. So GLaDOS, Sully, Atreus. What are we thinking about that trio? Sully, I think, is awesome that he's on this list and that you, you thought of putting Sully on here. What's so interesting is I didn't think to put him on here. I love the Uncharted games just because... I don't know. I guess I just didn't. I don't know. Like I wish he came on some adventures. Like I know he was there on the adventures and the cutscenes, but that'd be cool if he like. I yeah, don't know. I get. I get what you're saying. I, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. It, like, it would be cool if if he did like an Elizabeth sort of thing, you know, or like. Yeah, but I like I like that they just kind of pepper Sully throughout the stories here and there. You know, they don't they don't great, overdo it. He's a great character for sure. Um. I don't know. If for some reason he's me, where I'm just like, ah, but I really like him. I'm really glad that we're giving him some love, but he might not fall in the top ten, the top five, rather, rather. Uh, yeah. I he, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I cannot imagine Glados not being top five. Yes, sir. We haven't touched Glados. Glados is definitely on there. Glados has to be top five in my opinion because. It's just such an interesting idea of her as a companion. And it's just perfect because you're literally isolated in this lab and she's your only companion and she's just like tormenting you. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> she's just the best. Yeah, I think GLaDOS has got to stay. All right, so what um, do we got? Uh, Luigi, Kim, and GLaDOS are... Are bolded right now. Bolded, right? And then I would also say Clank is going to be bolded. Like- so that means out of Sully, Atreus, and Miriam, we can only pick one. Hmm. <laughs> like it's hard because Wander Song out of that list, Wander Song is my favorite game out of that those three. Yeah. And I think, you know, for for the reasons that we talked about, like it's a narrative based game, so her. Her, yeah. her portion of that really pushes the narrative. Sully's just a lot of fun, but you know what? Uh, Atreus too. You know he he also pushes the narrative in God of War too. At the same definitely time. does. Yeah. All right. How about this? Let's. This is not scientific, but let's do one, two, three. Let's order those three, and then we'll we'll say who's our one, two, and three, and we'll see how how it shakes out. Now I'm going to be biased in this one because I didn't play Wander Song. Which is fine. Yeah. I would say... I would say Miriam is my number one. Atreus to Sully 3. Honestly, that, my list was the same. Not to be copycat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Shelby, what do you have? I was going to do Atreus, Sully, Miriam. Hmm. So I would say Sully's on the back end of that. Yeah, I would say we cut Sully based on that stuff. And then it's between Atreus and Miriam. Atreus is the best of both worlds, though, because he helps you in combat, and he also adds to the narrative. Yeah. Well, if you guys, Miriam definitely helps you in combat. Yeah, if you guys just both had Miriam as your number one, then I would say that's a, that's a shoo-in. Yeah, but we can also revisit the rest of the list and if you if we think that atreus can uproot one of those four mm. then um you know we're open to that what do you think i mean I, i'm definitely partial uh to the character because i love the game but again i don't want to make it 
a fact that just because I love the game that the companion is a good companion. But right, but he is a good companion. He is a good companion. I think, yeah. uh, like we said, he pushes a narrative. He practically is half the narrative. I'm, you yeah. know, um, it's a new thing for the main character of God of War to be with a companion like that. He helps in combat. And they did it so well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, as far as that, as far as mysteries, uh, with each and every turn, I I think he's a great great character. Um, so I can't speak much for Miriam because again, I didn't play that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as the other characters, like I, I can't see a list without Luigi on it. You know, like yeah, G- Glado same way. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the thing that I'll say for Miriam is um, she kind of plays uh, like a foil to your main character throughout most of the game, and then. Like where she's just like, wow, you are way too like <laughs> optimistic, and this is like brutal to watch. She's always like ragging on you about how ridiculous you are, um, and then eventually she starts to realize like how compelling his like the bard's story and mission is, and then in the end, she ends up you know being a major part of how they're able to you know save the world uh and and it's just such a good like interesting uh character throughout the game um and the fact that she's like helping in the end and and in the fights and stuff it's it's super super good yeah, she, she sounds pretty vital to that one as well she's yeah, oh, yeah. the, uh, the spongebob episode where they have to deliver the pizza on the boulder yeah it's like it's like SpongeBob and, and like Squidward and how like Squidward the whole time. I thought I had this genius analogy for those. <laughs> I was just saying, what are you talking about? Miriam, just go home. <laughs> Miriam's the Squidward character in the body of the SpongeBob character in that like the whole time like she's just completely like hates him, and then at the end, you know. She helps something. It's beautiful. I don't know. It sounded genius in my head. <laughs> Dan, it's not a bad analogy, uh, but it sounds the best. Uh, I I just have a I have a soft spot for Miriam on this list just because of how uh, much that story touched me and how how well how much that character played into that. Uh, I think Atreus is just as vital to the God of War story. I just personally uh, didn't feel the same. Um, like I don't look back with the same reverence on that story as I do with Wander Song. All right. Personally, I, I, I'm I'm fine with cutting either one of them. So let's. Uh, All right. I like Miriam bottoms out. Miriam Miriam does it. So our top five video game companions of all time are Clank, Luigi, Kim Kitsuragi, Glados, and Miriam. Boom. Congrats to all five. Oh, yeah. We're not ordering these, by the way. God. <laughs> we're just doing fives. So, the bottom of the list, many less uh, nominees, so it shouldn't take too long. We have Ashley from Resident Evil 4, Navi, Slippy Toad, Baby Mario from Yoshi's Island, Claptrap, Caden from Mass Effect, Micah from Red Dead 2. Dom from Gears of War, Dead Man from Death Stranding, and Waka from Final Fantasy X. So, I would say Dom is in here because of all the Maria stuff. So, it's more like a goof. Like, he's ridiculous and it's it's really silly. But he's not a bottom five companion. No. So, we'll we'll cut Dom right away. I just thought it was funny to add him. I will say in Mass Effect, since it's got my Mass Effect file open, I uh, so I uh, actually let Ashley die. Well, Ashley is a space racist, so I she know, uh, that's right. That's why I let. Her. So she sucks. Yeah, no, I but left. Caden. <laughs> the reason I put Caden on here instead of Ashley is because Caden is the most like. Blah, vanilla, fucking nothing character of all time. Like he's just no one. He, he's no personality. Like I just, Caden is just nothing. In a, in a story that has so many amazing party members, 
Caden is just like fucking vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I don't think he's top or bottom three or bottom five, but I think he's pretty bad. He's pretty bad, but I think Ashley's worse. He, that's why he's I just bet. notably bad. Yeah, he's just notably <laughs> forgettable. Actually, I think it's worse to be a forgettable companion bad. than a actively like you know space racist like Ashley. Ashley. Cool. <laughs> All right, so we have we cut Caden. We have Ashley from RE4, Navi, Slippy Toad, Baby Mario, Claptrap, Micah, Dead Man, and Waka. We have to cut three of these in order to get to our five. I feel like the worst, like for me, like Micah is just terrible. And Mike, Micah needs Micah's to be... Micah's really up. bad, he's yeah. really bad. Like, he's bad because he's just a bad cat. Like, he's just evil, bad. Like He's he evil won't. and he's really badly written because Rockstar usually struggles with writing uh, good characters and they, they show it here big time. And he's just like a evil and also just poorly written character. Mm. And then uh, uh, Ashley is also poorly written, oh, but also she God. just in a game that's so tense, where yeah. she just she's so bad. <laughs> she just really gets in the way. Leon, <laughs> she is legitimately really just works. that that like voice line is so stuck in my head for the rest of my life. She might be because <laughs> she's so annoying, and also she's supposed to be like. 16 or something and leon is constantly hitting on her it's weird it's really weird and what and at the end right when they're on the boat yeah. on the playing? jet ski yeah <laughs> yeah i forget it's like something really like gross. It's really bad yeah i also think maybe claptrap is one of the most annoying characters ever in a video <laughs> game that's annoying yeah. like he goes like from I tutorial definitely... to annoying real quick real quick real real quick um so I think as bad of a character as Waka is, I think we have some worse things here. <laughs> I think we could cut Waka, <laughs> even though his weapon is a volleyball. and Or a blitz ball, actually. It's a blitz ball, but, but yeah, it's basically volleyball. a volleyball. <laughs> and he is just like, bro, what's up? He's like the worst kind of character. It's such like a of the time. Shaka shitty. blitz, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not, that's exactly who he is. So he sucks, but he's he's not one of the bottom five. Um, I think Micah's definitely a good one. I think Ashley's definitely a good one. I think Baby Mario from Yoshi's Island is a must-have here. Yeah, that just adds because so. that crying is the reason why people don't like that game, even though it's an amazing platform. It's one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> but it's so brutal that crying. <laughs> oh yeah. It's so brutal. You guys think about Navi. Should Navi be on there? I think Navi belongs on the bottom five. Navi is so rude. S- relentless. <laughs> Too much every two seconds. Relentless. What is it? This is, is it uh it doesn't in um Majora's mask she just like hitting you and stuff like that? She's just like, Hey yeah. stupid, get up. <laughs> yeah. Uh I yeah, I I, I so it's looking like, I, I don't know about you guys, I think Slippy Toad is like a joke, like useless, <laughs> like, you know, like <laughs> terrible companion, but Always I don't think trouble. he's, I don't think he's bottom five here. And no, Toad's, you ever watched the Super Mario Brothers uh, Super Show? Toad's got, Toad's got some not, character to him. Not, not Toad, Slippy. Slippy. Oh, I thought you said Toad. Slippy no. Toad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess he broke Toad. out there. Toad I su- is. I'm surprised that Toad was on the list when he. I thought no, oh. Toad. Toad doesn't belong on that list. You ever see <laughs> Captain Toad? He's the man. Yeah, he's a dude. Yeah, no, good. I'm glad. I, I was about to. Use that <laughs> I was like, that, that, no, that Slippy good, like. Slippy Toad is on that list, but I don't think he hangs with the rest of these. I think he's more of a joke. Yeah, he just sort of. Yeah, he's like a joke character more than. Do a barrel roll. Yeah, uh, and then I think I mean right now we have six left. We have Ashley, Navi, Baby Mario, Claptrap, Micah, and Dead Man. And I think Dead Man is the odd man out, even though he is such a bad character in that game. <laughs> and it it's, you know, I I think he's absolutely terrible. But 
looking at the rest of these, I mean, these this is a hell of a list. That's a hell of a five without that man, I will say. I think our worst list is better than our best list. Our bottom five is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, Navi, Baby Mario, Claptrap, and Micah. What's Micah? Can you someone look up Micah's last name? Hey, Micah. Micah Gold Digger. <laughs> It's something. Micah Bell. What is it? Micah Bell. Micah Bell. Bell. Yep. Yep. All right. So I think we have our top five and bottom five, guys. All right. Read them out. Top five video game companions of all time are Clank, Luigi, Kim Kitaragi, GLaDOS, and Miriam. Bottom five all time video game companions are Ashley, Navi, Baby Mario, Claptrap, and Micah Bell. What a list. Not bad. I think we did very good, guys. Oh, gentlemen. Great job. All right. That's going to do it for the episode. I kind of like ending it on this note because a lot of times we we have like sad news and then we're like, all right, well, that's the end of the episode. <laughs> so we're going to start trying to do top five, bottom fives um, as a segment at the end of the episode. Um, so let us know if you enjoyed that as much as we did. And thank you, Dan, for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Shelby, for being here. Thank you. I'm happy we can do this. Me too. Uh, and thank you guys so much out there for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Circle Back Podcast. Until next time, peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and or listening. Just here to remind you that you can find us by searching for Circle Back Podcast or Circle Back Gaming on any of these podcast services, Anchor, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, or Stitcher. My God, I'm out of breath because of all these podcast services, but you can find us anywhere there. Also, you can find us, our video version, on YouTube by searching Circle Back Podcasts or Circle Back Gaming uh, and the rest of the videos we do. Thanks, guys.